Welcome to Build Your Maverick Business, the podcast for underdog, outlier, and renegade entrepreneurs. Brought to you by Strange Creative Studio. If you dream of going off on your own and launching your rebel empire, but don't know where to start, you're in the right place. We'll teach you how to use mindset, branding, and practical advice to build a killer business and transform your world. And now, here's your host, founder of Strange, Alex Pitt. Hello, everyone. Welcome back. Hope you're wrapped up warm. Hope you're excited for Halloween. I nearly forgot that that was coming up. So engrossed have I been with (laughs) general business things the last few weeks. And I've realised that I have absolutely no parties, nothing planned. So I've got no costumes to wear, which is rubbish. Joe, on the other hand, bought himself a Beach Ken outfit and it is magnificent. I'll let him carry the uh, the Halloween baton for both of us this year. <laughs> now, I'm going to dive straight in with this week's episode because I have decided to share with you one of my favourite business stories of all time. Partly because I think there's a lesson in there. Partly just because I think it's a bit batshit and it's a really good story. Now, it's no surprise to anyone who's listened to this podcast for a while, that I am a big fan of video games, and so this story has something to do with gaming. Specifically, the PlayStation. Now, when I was younger, we had a Sega Saturn. That's how old I am. Used to play Command & Conquer all the time, me and my brother, strategising. But all the cool kids at my school had PlayStations. Shocker, I wasn't a cool kid at school. The first one was released in like 1994. I think we actually managed to borrow a PlayStation off our mates once and had it for like a week and it was just the best thing ever. (laughs) Just played Crash Bandicoot non-stop all through half term. Oh, what a time to be alive. But that's not the one we're talking about. No, this episode specifically is about the PlayStation 3. Right, this is a bit of a throwback. This was released in 2006. This was the console that I think I lost about 150 hours of my life fighting dragons, playing Skyrim. This was when I was supposed to be getting a degree. I did get it in the end, but the dragons definitely took priority for a little while is all I'm saying. Now, I've mentioned a docuseries in the past that I love and which inspired today's episode because this is where the story came from. This is where I learned about this. It's called Secrets of Super Brands on BBC. And what they reveal on this episode, having completely demolished and performed an autopsy on this PlayStation 3, (laughs) they took it apart, they analysed every single piece... And what they learn is that Sony, maker of the PlayStation, was selling these consoles for less money than it cost to make them. Now, I'm sure you all know, first lesson in business, that's not the way around it should be. You want to make a profit on things that you're selling. Now, the price that it cost Sony to make this console fluctuated. I think it started out at per unit, they were losing about $200. They managed to get it down to about $30, $40 per unit in the end. But whatever way you look at it, they were making a loss on every single PlayStation 3. Now, at the time of this documentary airing, they had sold 41 million PlayStation 3s, which added up to over $3 billion that they'd lost making this machine. So you've got to wonder what the fuck is happening there. I can't imagine that the entirety of Sony HQ had just let this slip. Now, the real reason why they did this, I think, is cool as fuck and quite funny. So let's dive in, right? So what's happening here? Well, one of the components, one of these expensive bits of kit that go into making this PlayStation 3 is a Blu-ray player. Over $100 of cost per unit. Now, for anyone who isn't a gamer, let me tell you this. You don't need a Blu-ray player to play games. So why is it in there? And why have they put such an expensive bit of kit in this console? Well, my lovely listeners, to find the answer to that, we need to go back in time to another moment in Sony's history. So rewind, going back in the decades, we are now in 1983. Yeah, man, shoulder pads, talking heads, Bonnie Tyler. (laughs) Is that Bananarama? Right, we're in 1983. (laughs) And a fierce rivalry was raging on the high streets. Check me out, set in the scene. Now, this rivalry was not person versus person. It was not team versus team. Oh, no. 
This was a format war. So you see at the time, in 1983, when home videos were becoming a thing, remember that? Having to change tapes halfway through Titanic? At the time, there were two completely incompatible formats of home video, right? So Sony had Betamax and VHS was the format made by their competitor, JVC. I hope you can keep up with the acronyms here. So Sony have got Betamax, JVC have got VHS. Are you with me so far? So video rental shops would literally have the store split down the middle, depending on which machine you had, which format you could play. Two copies of the same film, two different formats. Didn't really make sense. So this format rivalry went on for a good few years throughout the 1980s, but something's got to give, right? It's a bit of a messy system. Now the scale started to tip thanks to a couple of smart moves from JVC. Now they did a couple of things. First of all, JVC allowed other companies, other people to manufacture their machines. So that meant it was a bit cheaper to get one. Bish, bash, bosh, more people buying VHS. But they didn't stop there. Oh no, they had one silver bullet up their sleeve still. Do you know what it was? They allowed one particular genre of moving picture on their tapes that Sony were not having any of. Porn! It was porn. JVC allowed pornography to be distributed on VHS tapes. An adult video was apparently a very lucrative market. And yet Sony very firmly said, not in my good Christian suburbs. <laughs> We're not having any of that filth on Betamax. So the dirty bastards of the world shelled out their cash on some quality VHS entertainment in the comfort of their own home. So by the 90s, it was over for Betamax. Was not a thing anymore. There was even a Mighty Boosh episode where the villain is called the Betamax Bandit. <laughs> and he was an angry tape monster, upset that he'd become an obsolete format. See why I love this story? It's so fucking silly. Right, so flash forward 16 years and the echoes of the VHS Betamax rivalry are starting to bubble up again because... We all started buying high-definition DVD players. Right, DVDs have come. Everyone's gotten used to them. But now the high-definition ones are coming in, so everyone's buying new players. And what do you know? It happened again. There were two incompatible formats. Sony throwing in Blu-ray into the ring, coming up against Toshiba this time. Toshiba had the HD DVD as their competitor, as their format. So this time... Sony are like, nah, mate, we're not making that mistake again. <laughs> so after a bit of a begrudging start, they said, all right, you can put porn on Blu-ray if you must. So that was a start. That meant that they weren't immediately eradicated in this fight. Now, I just picture a boardroom at the time with ideas to take down Toshiba written on the flip chart. <laughs> and they've like written porn with a tick next to it. Like, okay, we've done that. That one's good. But I don't know if that's going to tip the scales for us, lads. So what else have we got? Come on, spitball. What else we got? What else we got? And suddenly, one of them had a brainwave and said, what if we Trojan horse the motherfuckers and just sneak a Blu-ray player into everyone's houses without them noticing? <laughs> and so they did. At a loss of quite a stupid amount of money per unit sold of the PlayStation 3, they Trojan horsed everyone, snuck a very expensive Blu-ray player into their homes. And so everyone just naturally went and bought Blu-rays. The format rivalry was over. Blu-ray was victorious. Now, apparently, Sony having lost, like I say, over three billion dollars winning this battle, they did eventually start turning a profit on the PlayStation 3 several years later, having lost all that money. Now, as of the time of recording of this podcast, as of 2023, they are valued at over $100 billion. So I'm sure no one at Sony HQ is going hungry. They're all right. They can afford to take that hit. Now, I'm not telling this story because I think everyone should sink their money in shitting on the competition. Absolutely not. <laughs> Nor do I think that anyone listening to Build Your Maverick Business has $3 billion sat around. The reason that I love this story is that there are just certain calculated risks that need to be taken in business. You don't always know if your investment 
is going to pay off. You never know that the money that you're going to put into your business is 100% going to come back tenfold or even break even for you. And yes, there's research that you can do and there's due diligence that you can do to make sure that that risk is reduced. And no, you should never put yourself in financial trouble taking these risks, even though some of these hustle culture dudes will say otherwise. But we don't listen to them, loves. What I'm trying to say is that if you have money sat in your account, sat in your business account, that you're just leaving there, but you could invest, that money has the potential to propel you forward. Whether you're going to spend it on a mindset coach, on paid ads to grow your audience, whatever it is, you don't necessarily know that it's going to pay off and give you a solid return on investment. But the likelihood is that investing smart money on your business will get you to a much stronger place. Risk-taking is such an integral part of success in general. I don't even think it's just business. I think that's just good life sense. So, my loves, no matter what your views on adult video, be a little bit more Sony. That's it from me for this week. Have a good one, and I'll catch you here next time. If you love what you're hearing in this podcast but you are still yet to start that rebel empire of your own, I've got something that might help. Head over to the show notes of this episode where you will find a free seven-step action plan to kick-starting your first side hustle. It's got pretty pictures, it's got activities. What more could you want, my loves? Get it downloaded, try it out, let me know how you get on.